So I spent the last few months using a variety of different liquid screen protectors, and here's the bottom line. These liquid screen protectors are not a complete replacement for traditional glass or plastic screen protectors. Now with that being said, these things are pretty cool. I've come to this conclusion after using three different brands of liquid screen protectors on a variety of different devices. In order to test them effectively, I've stripped an iPhone 10 with a magic eraser, done a ton of oleophobic tests, several scratch tests, and impact tests to see how far we can actually push this kind of product. Another way to look at liquid screen protectors is that they are the equivalent of sunblock for your smartphone. It's annoying to put on, will only last for a while, and you kind of have no idea if it's working properly. If you want full sun protection, you're better off wearing a hat and a sun shirt, which I guess for your iPhone would be the equivalent to an actual screen protector or case. Now, according to the marketing fluff, these products will improve the scratch resistance after you put them on, provide 9-inch hardness, repel water, and they're invisible. This one has anti-radiation and antibacterial as well. So there's a lot of marketing fluff when it comes to these products. Now with such fluffy marketing, some of the questions that I personally had and will answer in this video include, what are liquid screen protectors exactly? Can you really re-add the oleophobic coating back to your device? Does it actually add to the scratch resistance of the device? Will it fill in cracks and scratches? Does it really make the screen tougher? Can you use it with the screen protector on top of the liquid screen protector and does it work with waterproof cases? So after I share with you my answers, I'm also going to share with you my recommendations for this type of product. Real usage, real reviews. Mobile reviews, eh? .ca. At Mobile Reviews, a Monty and I base all our reviews on actual usage. We kind of figure, why would you do it any other way? So what are liquid screen protectors exactly? Well, it's just liquid glass. The base compound that's used in every single product that I've come across is silicone dioxide. Now, I'm not sure if companies add additional products to the silicone dioxide. When SiO2 dries naturally, it provides the oleophobic coating and the antibacterial properties by itself. From the Googling that I've done, liquid glass can be pretty much applied to anything that you can think of. Now, out of curiosity, I did rub half my Lucky Rock with the liquid screen screen protector application to see, you know, what would happen. It still looks and feels like my Lucky Rock and, well, water, it doesn't really repel any water. I kinda can't tell which side I put it on. According to these liquid screen protector manufacturers, they say that the glass on your smartphone gets rough over time at the microscopic level. A new smartphone comes with a coating that wears down over time, but most coatings will only last a few months. So applying a liquid screen protector basically smooths over all the rough spots on your screen uh, that you incur over time. Now in terms of thickness, these screen protectors are usually between 15 to 30 molecules thick, I can't measure that, and or 100 nanometers thick. So they're not gonna add any sort of noticeable thickness to your device. Every product that I used had the liquid screen protector come in a wipe form. The Wush product didn't feel any different than the alcohol wipe that was included with the package. And honestly, it could have been another alcohol wipe because I wouldn't have known any different. Snake oil, the only product that I could feel a difference was the Crystal Tech Nano 2.0 as it felt a little tacky. Now, can you really re-add the oleophobic coating back to your device with a liquid screen protector? To see if this marketing fluff was true, I stripped half my iPhone 10 with a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Now, to see if the oleophobic coating was stripped, I did a water drop test, and as you can see, the Magic Eraser does a great job of wearing down the factory coating on the iPhone 10. If you want to see how much effort it took to strip the oleophobic coating, I recommend you check out that video I did prior to making this liquid screen protector one. Take note of how quickly the water comes off the side with the stock coating and how much slower it is on the stripped side. There is a noticeable difference. After stripping it, I retaped the non-strip side and added a Spigen liquid screen protector to the other side. One of the upsides of liquid screen protectors is that you can apply it to more than just one device. So I decided to add the rest of the liquid screen protector to a five-year-old iPad. This iPad is one of the oldest and most used devices in my house, so I figured it'd be a good way to see if, well, it actually works. Prior to adding the liquid screen protector, I did the water droplet test to get a sense of how worn down the screen was. And as you can see, the water droplets were in no hurry to come off the screen. In addition to the iPhone 10 and the iPad, I used the Crystal Tech Nano 2.0 liquid screen protector on my oldest iPhone, which is an iPhone 6 Plus, and on my Apple Series 2 Apple Watch. I also did the water droplet test on the iPhone 6 Plus before application, and the water droplets moved incredibly slowly. The water droplets looked almost sticky, like they were stuck to the screen. One of the downsides of liquid screen protectors is that, well, you have to let it cure for 48 hours. Uh, you can use it right away, but for it to be 100% cured, it needs 24 to 48 hours. After waiting two days, I went and redid all the water droplet tests from the same angle, same location, same eyedropper, and the water droplets, again, were in no hurry to come off the screen. Looking at the footage side by side, one would be hard pressed to say that one side was faster. The iPad screen showed almost no difference. In fact, it looks stickier. The iPhone 6 Plus didn't seem any different, and the iPhone 10, with half of it being the stock coating and then the other half being the non-stock coating, it, it didn't fare any better either. 
Now I know that wider isn't the same as greasy grubby fingerprints, but even my test with fingerprints didn't prove anything conclusive. Now I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty sure the oleophobic coating has been increased, but it's happening at a microscopic level, which I can't see with my eyes. But that being said, it's still kind of disappointing not being able to see any discernible difference between, you know, a device that's been completely stripped and actually adding on a screen protector to it. And it goes back to my analogy of all the sunblock. It has all these things, but does it actually work? Fewer ingredients, yay! The only thing that I noticed throughout this entire process is that the screens on my older devices definitely felt smoother. It didn't repel any water or fingerprints any better, but it felt smoother. So that's a plus, making your devices feel a little new again. If you really need the oleophobic coating back, just get a new screen protector. If you're trying to figure out if you need a plastic or glass one, do check out one of my uh, earlier videos. As a side note, there were several complaints in my Utomic Edge review saying that I was being unrealistic and complaining that the iPhone 10 broke too easily. This iPhone 6 Plus was the same iPhone that took Bertha, the steel ball, to the face multiple times several years ago. It has a dent in the back of the iPhone from the force of the ball coming in from the front of the iPhone, and it still works after several years later. I dropped the iPhone 10 once in the Utomic stuff in full protection, and it stopped working, which is why I say the iPhone 10 just isn't as tough. Now do liquid screen protectors add scratch resistance to the device? Technically, if you're adding another layer of glass on top of a smartphone screen, then yes, it will. But this layer is only 15 to 30 molecules thick and it's just glass. With that in mind, it would be almost impossible for me to gauge if it actually adds the additional scratch resistance because I'm basically scratching glass on top of older glass and there's no way for me to peel off the newer glass. Now all the products that I've used say they have 9H hardness, but that's really not a selling factor anymore. That's like the de facto standard for everything. The average tempered glass screen protector is gonna provide 9H hardness, so having a liquid screen protector being 9H, again, nothing special. However, from an interest standpoint, tempered glass is made by basically heating up regular glass and cooling it quickly. So slathering liquid glass on top of your device using a wet wipe and having it be 9H hardness is actually quite a neat feat if you think about it. Now for scratch resistance, I decided to mold the front of my iPhone 10, the one that had two different coatings on it. I started with the usual rock, followed by keys, knives, and those implements had no effect on either side of the screen, which is to be expected. The iPhone 10 itself has a chemically treated screen, so it's going to be of 9H hardness already. The only thing that I knew that was going to scratch the surface of the iPhone is sandpaper, so I used some 320 grit sandpaper and lightly grazed the iPhone screen twice. Both sides scratched and one side did not look any better than the other. Even through my macro lens, I couldn't really see a difference between the two sides. The photos are a little blurry, I'm sorry, but trying to take close-up photos of minute scratches on your device is nearly impossible, apparently. So does it add extra scratch resistance to your device? I'm gonna say no. Logically, it makes sense because you're slathering on another layer of thin glass to it, but because you can't remove that thin glass, you kinda can't see if your screen was protected or not. The liquid screen protector actually becomes part of the screen, so I guess in that logic, yeah, it totally doesn't. Now, will liquid screen protectors fill in cracks or scratches? I was really hoping that it would, but it doesn't. I applied a liquid screen protector to a cracked screen protector to see if it would fill in the cracks, and after, well, letting this gigantic dot of liquid glass screen protector dry, the crack was still there, and it didn't look any different from before. For scratches, I wiped my beat up Apple Watch Series 3 with the liquid screen protector, and the giant gash across the front of the device did not look any better. The tiny scratches on the device did not look any better, or worse. On the iPhone 10 that I used, I actually tested with my file and left a few light scratches on the screen after I stripped off the oleophobic coating. Adding a liquid screen protector did nothing to lessen the eyesore on my $1,000 money sink. Even my mildly scratched up Apple Watch Series 2 still shows a ton of scratches after adding a liquid screen protector to it. If you've got a bit of damage on your Apple Watch and want to hide it, you're probably going to be stuck with a glass screen protector. Now, the one I'm showing you is an edge-to-edge -edge screen protector. It doesn't look too bad from a distance, but it's got a lot of cracks in it, so it's not great either. If you want to know more about what I think about Apple Watch screen protectors, do check out that video. So if you're finding this video helpful and useful or you appreciate the amount of effort I put in these videos, I do consider helping me out by getting all your Amazon stuff. Regardless of if it's tech or it's household cleaning items or food, use my Amazon links to go to Amazon. The stuff that you buy won't cost anymore and you'll just be basically helping me do more videos like this in the future. Now let's talk about how tough this stuff is. Now the Wush Diamond Defense was the only product that said it was gonna be stronger by a certain amount, 15 times to be exact. Now they don't tell me if it's, you know, treated glass or untreated glass or what kind of device or anything about it. Nothing on the packaging tells me that or their website is pretty ambiguous as well. The only way that I thought I could reasonably test the uh, strength of a liquid screen protector was to find three identical screen protectors and do a series of drop tests with Bertha, my steel ball. 
First I applied a liquid screen protector to one of the tempered glass screen protectors, then I had to wait 48 hours for the stupid thing to cure. I placed the screen protectors on my gridit, which has a foam back, and you might be thinking, why a foam back? Because I wanted to measure the impact of Bertha, not the compression of the glass between Bertha and the hard surface. So I went outside and set up my old screen protector test unit, and used the first screen protector to figure out approximately what height it might break. That was approximately 9 inches. I used a second screen protector to redo the test to see if I could relatively relatively confirmed that it would break at that height. It broke at approximately 10 inches. Then I used a tempered glass screen protector with a liquid screen protector on top of it and started at 10 inches. Nothing. That's to be expected. Then I moved up an inch at a time. There was nothing wrong at 11 or 13 or 14 or 15. That screen protector with the liquid screen protector broke at 16 inches. Now I'll be honest with you, that was really surprising to me to actually see it be stronger. Now I know that's a very contained small sample, but that was the best that I could do. And while well, 16 inches and 10 inches, that's a lot of, uh, that's a big difference in my opinion. So pretty cool to see that happen. So sure, tiny layer of glass, can't tell the difference with scratch resistance, but you throw a gigantic metal ball at it, yeah, I'll protect it. <laughs> Now, can you use it with a screen protector on top? The simple answer is yes, since it's just glass on top of existing glass, there's no reason why you can't add another layer of glass to your screen, or plastic, depending on what type of protection that you need. As you saw, I used the liquid screen protector on my Apple Watch Series 3, and now it has a screen protector on top, and I haven't noticed any detrimental effects on the device, other than the fact that the screen protector on the Apple Watch is awful. Can you use liquid screen protectors with a waterproof case? Absolutely! In fact, this is the only type of screen protector that will work well with any sort of waterproof case since it doesn't add really any noticeable thickness to the device. From my perspective, it's going to work with any waterproof case out there. So would I recommend getting a liquid glass screen protector? I'll be honest with you, I was a little disappointed with the results of my testing. The oleophobic coating kind of doesn't work, the scratch resistance kind of doesn't work, the impact protection definitely worked, but then you consider that two out of three things on their marketing fluff that actually doesn't work. So, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, snake oil. Oh, and it doesn't fill in cracks or scratches as well. So I know that's not marketed, but I was really hoping it would. For me personally, the biggest drawback with the liquid screen protector is that you cannot remove it after it's damaged. So if you scratch or crack your screen, you can't just take it off like you would with a traditional screen protector and replace it with a new one. You're stuck with an actual broken screen. And that sucks. Now, if you wanted the ultimate glass screen protector protection, you could definitely take the liquid screen protector, slather it all over your iPhone, take the liquid screen protector, slather it all over the uh, gla regular glass screen protector you're about to use, and put the two together, and you're going to have a crazy, well-protected uh, screen protector, probably just as good as plastic. I might do a video on that in the near future. I would not recommend using a liquid screen protector by itself. If you use it with other screen protectors or with other cases, I think that extra protection is going to be worthwhile, but I don't think it's a standalone product. Now I'm a little softer when it comes to uh, liquid screen protectors and tablets because I generally not as rough with my tablets as I am with my smartphones. I generally accept that I'm going to beat the crap out of my smartphones. They're just going to go through an immense amount of wear and tear when compared to my tablets. So being able to put the liquid screen protector on the older iPad and then having it feel almost like new, like the smoothness was really nice. In addition to the smoothness, the extra impact protection that it provides for your iPad is going to be great because, well, the biggest thing that's going to happen to your iPad is most likely a broken screen. So being able to improve the protection in that manner for a tablet is probably worthwhile with the liquid screen protector. What I get a liquid screen protector for my smartwatch specifically for it no because it doesn't fill any of the scratches and from my experience just using smartwatches in general the only thing that happens to them is that they do get scuffed up over time and then again they don't improve the look of existing scratches and if you do scratch a liquid screen protector it just looks like a squiggler scratch screen is not great. But after everything is said and done, these things cost maybe $20. The Wish one is on perma sale for 20 bucks. It's like regular player priced $40. And you can slather it across a multitude of devices, which is probably one of the best features of it is that you can slather it all over your iPad, then slather it all over your iPhone, and then put it on your Apple Watch, and then put it on something else. One of the neat things about the impact protection test that I did, that screen protector was the fourth thing that I put a liquid screen protector to after my Lucky Rock application. So the mileage that you get out of these tiny packages is quite high. So, you know, if you're just looking for something to I don't know, spend 20 bucks on and you just want something with an extra, or you want to add a little bit more protection to all your electronic devices, then yeah, maybe use a liquid screen protector. So that's all I got for this video. If you know somebody who is thinking about getting a liquid screen protector, share this video with them because, well, people need to know about this stuff. 
first time you're watching one of my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe because I produce high quality content every once in a while. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Okay, we're done. I'm tired. You're tired. Yeah. All right. Go.